What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Ripple Van Winkle. Hopefully, everyone's having an amazing day. It's the freaking weekend. It was just a payday Friday. I even got back my vacation sell back in the last check on Friday. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Hopefully, you got some big plans lined up for today for me. It's work, non-stop work, folks. Just focus it on the YouTube, the Lux Lions, the Deluxe Network, the Discord, the Twitter. It just keeps on going, it never ends. That is Web3 for you. But you know what? At the end of the day, everyone who has been following my vision, who has been following my focus, is going to make out. In this video, we got a lot to go over. Wait till you hear this statement from the SEC. When Gary Gensler's right-hand man was asked about the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit and the outcome, you're in five. I think it just rug, folks. Bitcoin gas fees, absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how people keep on using the network and Coinbase has a lot of nerve charging what they do. Wait till you see this transaction. We're gonna talk Fidelity because they're doubling down on crypto. We're gonna look at the XRP triangle where we are currently sitting. So without further ado, what do you say we jump into it? Bitcoin, $36,510. It's currently down 0.03% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in at 1,943. It's down 1.16%. USDT is coming in as dollar peg, but USDC is coming in at a mean lean 99 cents. As XRP is coming in at 60 cents, it's down 0.93% in the past 24 hours. Total cryptocurrency market cap, 1 trillion 383 billion. We got a long ways to go before we get to that old all-time high of 2.7 trillion. We got a long ways to go before we set some new records. New total cryptocurrency market cap records. Now, if you did not sign up for the newsletter, folks, I really don't understand what you were doing. Join the hundreds of people already on the mailing list. The second newsletter has gone out just yesterday. We dug into Bitcoin. We looked at the short term. We looked at the long term price charts of Bitcoin and where we currently are. There is some great data in there. Let's just keep this real. We shouldn't be paying attention to all coins right now. We should only be paying attention to Bitcoin because what Bitcoin does is going to affect the rest of the market. Bitcoin is going to be the first to go. It's that simple. Bitcoin needs to clear the forty to forty-two thousand dollar range. Then we can talk about this thing breaking on up. I believe the targets I had in the newsletter for Bitcoin was around one hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars this cycle. In my last video, if you didn't watch it. We talked about where the total cryptocurrency market cap could go. We're looking at anywhere between four to seven trillion dollars. Could we get higher? 100% we can get higher, folks. But we are talking about the sweet spot, the meat and potatoes of this thing. We could definitely have a blow off top that sends this thing, you know, up to the eight to 10 trillion dollar range. We've even seen targets of a potential 17 trillion dollar total cryptocurrency market cap. But what is that going to take? It's simple. Adoption, mass adoption by the institutions. We are going to see need to see money rotating in from the traditional markets that are out there. And we can see a $17 trillion cryptocurrency market cap this time around. But until we see that happen, until we see the SEC, you know, change their tune, change the gear on the cryptocurrency markets, we're really looking at about a four to seven trillion dollar market cap. Well, wire, put this out. And now hopefully. Hopefully none of you are holding this one. Yearn Finance, YFI is the ticker. One of the biggest platforms in DeFi ecosystem has just plummeted over 45% in an apparent exit scam by insiders. Nearly half of the entire supply for Wi-Fi is held by 10 wallets. And over 250 million in market value has vanished in minutes. Absolutely insanity, let me blow this up, there you go. You can see the wallets, who's holding it. You can see the plummet, 45%. Keep your eyes on this. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you do not hold this, and I hope this is not an exit scam. Time will tell. Bitcoin gas fees, Coinbase, what are you doing to your users? It's only going to take about 30 minutes, don't worry. And the network fee, $12.95. This person was trying to send 100 bucks. They're taking 13 bucks just for the fee. It's coming out to 86.30. This is not the future of finance. Bitcoin has proven time and time again, it is not to be used as a transfer of money. 
The fees are ridiculous. This is only a hundred dollars. He's getting eighty six thirty, folks. Bitcoin is being positioned to be a store of value. Hold it, just like you hold gold. That's it. Bitcoin's initial white paper when it first came out. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to go down. Fidelity. They want to create an, e, an Ether ETF joining BlackRock and doubling down on crypto. Says Fidelity, BlackRock, and other financial firms want to list Bitcoin and Ether ETFs, which could make it easier for investors to invest into crypto. It said ETFs could make it far easier for the average person to invest money in crypto-linked assets. The SEC still needs to approve these applications for them to trade in the U.S. The regulator is mulling Bitcoin ETFs as well. Fidelity is going to get in. BlackRock's going to get in. They are all coming. At this point, it is just a matter of time. Incredible Crypto said he thinks Bitcoin's ready. He put this out yesterday. He thinks Bitcoin is ready to go. And remember, the professionals out there, the people of the inside knowledge, they're telling you that we should see a Bitcoin ETF approved before January 10th. That is about seven weeks away. The catalyst to this bull cycle, and I've been preaching this for quite some time, it's very simple. It's the ETFs, it's the institutional money that's going to enter the space. XRP drops just keeps on killing it. He got this out. Ripple, leading innovator in automated clearing houses for the banking industry, is from November 11th, just seven days ago. By means of geographical reach, Ripple leads the pack, followed by Zero and Alphabet. Alphabet's Google, if you didn't know that. According to Global Delta, uh, Global Data, there are 290 plus companies spanning technology, technological vendors, established banking companies, and upcoming startups engaged in the development and application of the automating clearinghouses. And Ripple is leading the pack, folks. Ripple and TerraPay, don't forget, 20 licenses to operate in more than 60 countries. They have offices in Asia, Europe, and Africa, and plans to uh, expand across the world. Remember, Ripple pretty much told us the other day that they have global coverage. Then we get this, the director of the SEC was asked, what is his current thinking of the SEC in light of the recent court decisions in the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit? Listen to this, genius. To ask you what is the current thinking from the SEC in light of recent court decisions, but for the benefit of our readers, let me summarize uh, the um, uh, misalignment uh, as best as I can. So, uh, as you know, Judge Torres in the Southern District of New York considered XRP by Ripple Labs uh, and found that the sales of tokens to institutional investors were actually securities because they were directly negotiated. Uh, with the understanding that proceeds from uh, these sales will be reinvested into the enterprise. Obviously, these were exempt transactions, but uh, the, the threshold question was that, that that contract involved a security. But on the other hand, uh, she found that sales to the public in anonymous transactions over crypto exchanges, these were not securities because investors did not buy from Ripple <laughs> and they were not responding to any marketing campaign. So that's what Judge Torres uh, found. On the other hand, uh, Judge Rakoff uh, did not fall in line with that reading, uh, and he argued that no such distinction can arise because if there's a public campaign for the tokens, it draws no distinction on whether uh, it is uh, on the type of purchase or institutional or retail. So I, I know you cannot comment on current cases, but I was hoping you could expand on the factors the SEC considers when it approaches this question. Let's stop him right there. He can't comment because the lawsuit is currently ongoing. Three out of the four things in the lawsuit are already come to an end. Why can't he make a comment on the sales to the public or the sales on the exchanges? Why can't he comment on that? Sure. I mean, you're, you're right. I can't comment on pending litigation, and, and there is a lot of pending litigation right now. Uh, but I think there, there's not a, a lawyer in the room that you're in uh, or a lawyer that practices in this space or a court that really struggles to find the framework that we use to determine whether or not something uh, constitutes a security in this space. In this case, in the crypto space, all the attorneys in this room, uh, all the attorneys counseling crypto issuers uh, look to the Howey test. And Howey, you know, based on a seminal Supreme Court case from 1946 and decades of case law since, 
that defines what or gives us a framework of determining what constitutes an investment contract and therefore a security under the federal securities laws. And and that's really the point of how whether or not something is a security doesn't depend on the label you give it. It doesn't depend. So it's interesting. This guy's doubling down on Howie. But when Judge Torres took the Howie test and looked at it in the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit, she said, OK, it doesn't meet all four prongs like it's supposed to. But yet the SEC is crying about this, that it's not fair, that she needs to revisit the Howie. They did exactly what they wanted her to do, and XRP failed the Howie test. And these people are so blind to it that they're going to fight this to its death. Does it make sense? Dark Defender, don't forget about this chart. This is very important. He put this out. Listen, right now, XRP is floating around, you know, 60, 61 cents. It's very important we hold these levels, even 59. I got the targets around 59.60 for the bottom. We need to hold. We're at 60 cents right now. We're closer to 61 than we are to 59. We need to hold these levels. The weekly close is coming tomorrow. We need to push on up. We need to get out of this range. The range extends all the way from 61 to, to uh, 66. We need to break through. We need to get to that 72 cent range so we can get a continuation and we can get the push up because the next stop for XRP is going to lead us to that dollar mark. Once we get to that dollar mark, we can then start talking about XRP getting back to its all time high from last bull run which was around a dollar 90 once that is broken and i suspect strong resistance around that mark but once that is broken we can push on up and we can get start talking about the next all-time high which is going to lead xrp above three dollars folks it's coming we are so close don't lose faith and don't follow what's going on twitter is a lot of bad news always negative news around xrp a lot of it's bull crap stay focused folks the bull run is here wash your damn hands be nice and be kind of each other ripple van winkle is out